And we're back, everyone, on The Morning Show on WFHR. Welcome back once again. Ooh, my timing was off there. All right. <laughs> You got to practice. This is, this is your practice round. Thanks, I, that's right. Yeah, no one's listening, right? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Katrina just texted us. <laughs> she did. <laughs> Thanks, Th- Katrina. Yes. Uh, thanks for joining us today, everyone. As uh, we roll through hour number two of the morning show, we got lots to get mm-hmm. to. We're going to get to uh, a band member ass- assaulting each other on stage. Oh, boy. We're going to get to the uh, Ig Noble Awards. I love mm-hmm. the I love the Ig Noble Awards. They're great. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about some theater stuff, an expensive martini, all kinds of stuff as we go through the hour. But right now, I'm going to introduce you uh, to our guest for the morning. We have Allie Waite here, Miss Wisconsin Rapids 2024. Uh, thank, uh, we're going to uh, welcome her in here to talk a little bit about being Miss Wisconsin Rapids for the la- oh, just about the last year and some of the other stuff she's doing. Uh, and I uh, want to uh, welcome you here, uh, Allie, to The Morning Show. Good morning. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> well, let's get right to it. You are a graduate of Lincoln High School and Mid-State Technical College. You completed the uh, Nail Technician Program, and we'll get into that just a little bit. But first, how's it been being Miss Wisconsin Rapids for uh, just about a year? Very chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very honest way of saying that, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything in particular that stood out to you? I got recognized a lot at places that I never would have expected, mm. and mm. that was probably the coolest part, is realizing how tight of a community we have. That is really... Oh, that's wonderful. That's cool. And you didn't wear your crown out or anything? You just... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, just Look, myself. it's me. It was to wrap it stuff. So. <laughs> Uh, that's that's cool. I mean, what are some of the the the, the like I don't know if I would say official uh, 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 Miss Wisconsin Rapids things you did, but what were some of the main like um, uh, events that you did as Miss Wisconsin Rapids? Mm. My favorite was the Daddy Daughter Dance at the YMCA oh, okay. because it's just all these little girls and they have crowns on and they look up to you, which is so fun. Oh, mm-hmm. that's cute. Yeah, and then we went to quite a few locals, so I got to watch all my friends at Miss Wisconsin get crowned. Oh, oh nice. nice. Which is really cool. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. really neat. Yeah. Uh, so uh, one of the a couple of things that we want to talk to you about, not only about being Miss Wisconsin Rapids, but uh, you, like I said, you completed the nail technician program over at Midstate. Big shout out to Midstate. Uh, and you just recently opened your own business, Allie Joe Nails. Tell us a little about your business. So I rent out a room at The Cutting Edge, okay. and I get to make my own schedule, my own appointments, and I love my clients. It feels like I just get to talk to my friends all day, so oh, that's fun. really fun. And I've been doing now since I was about eight years old, so oh, wow. it's been a long time coming. Oh, goodness. Oh, you, cool. took, you like had ready-made clientele. Uh, when you when you open up when you put out your shingle, that's really, oh, that's that's really cool. Um, mm-hmm. What's your what's your favorite part about it? Is it the um, uh, the the camaraderie with people? Is it just the the socializing that comes with it? Some days it is, and some days I just love the art side of it. I got oh. into it because I like nail art, and so mm. it's like my creative side. I get to express myself through nails. Oh, that's that very cool. That was going to be my question. What is your favorite nail style to do for a client? Mm. Oh, gosh. Tough one. Yeah, I don't know for a client, (laughs) but I love doing characters on myself. Mm, Like, okay. Movie characters and stuff. Mm. Wow. That's like some really. (laughs) Yes. That's really fine work. My goodness. Um, so, so you, like once again, you said you're at the cutting edge. That is where mm-hmm. your your nail business is. Uh, you also, it says you have. I got in my notes here. Your talent is speed painting. I was going to say we got to segue into that. We do. I want to hear about speed painting. So I, I don't even know what is that. I don't even know what it is. Painting really fast, usually in ninety seconds, which is the Miss America speed limit for the talent. Oh. 90 seconds? Yeah. Oh my gosh. How like a full a painting? Canvas? <laughs> yeah. So I have a canvas, and for my local, I did a silhouette of Taylor Swift, like singing. I'm mm-hmm. a big Swifty. Okay. <laughs> and then nice. for my state, I did Bucky the Badger. Oh, wow. very cool. In 90 okay. seconds? Yes. It's uh, stressful. <laughs> I bet. I was going to say, I was like, I was thinking, you know, like you get like a half an hour <laughs> it's just like it's usually yes well it takes several days to do a painting no no that's that is amazing oh my gosh so do you do it with just like one color or since it's a silhouette or do you have full color i've been doing just black okay. but i also do it upside down so it's a little harder oh, wow. for the audience to tell oh my gosh. what it is <laughs> she knows that's so cool i am learning so much right now i have no idea <laughs> that sounds really cool though wow that's amazing yeah. Um, And let's talk about your community service initiative, uh, Keeping Kindness. What is that all about? 
It's really important to me to understand the scientific side of kindness. We, you release hmm. oxytocin. You receive it when you give kind acts, when you receive kind acts, and even when you witness kind acts. And oxytocin is the chemical that bonds humans. It's what connects them when you know a mother gives birth. That is what creates that mother-child bond. So hmm. kindness is really the heart of our society because without it, we're all disconnected. Okay. Hmm. Um, so the uh, do, you, do you go to specific places to talk about this, or, or where do you where do you do this? Uh, community initiative initiative I went to a few different schools lots of elementary schools talking about it and doing activities and then also when I'm at appearances I get asked about it so it's really cool being able to talk about it there Wow, and what kind of activities do you do at the schools? Mm. My favorite is like a toothpaste activity where I have kids squeeze out a tube of toothpaste and then they have to try and put it back in and it shows <laughs> that you can't take your words or your actions back. And nice. it gets really messy, so they like it. Oh, that's fun. Well, kids do like <laughs> do like messy things. Being messy. So. Mm. And squeebie, squeezing out tubes of toothpaste, which you, you would get in trouble with at home. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> do it at school where they make other people clean it up. Uh, so uh, as you come to the end of being uh, Miss Wisconsin Raps, the new one will be crowned very soon. What is the biggest takeaway for you? What was the thing that you found most interesting or most important about being Miss Wisconsin Rapids? Mm. You are a role model first and foremost, and whoever gets this position, it is such an honor. And just take that with a grain of salt that people are watching what you do, mm. and you have a year to make whatever difference you want. Mm. That's very, very cool. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Allie, for joining us today as you uh, come to the end of your reign, quote unquote, as uh, <laughs> Miss Wisconsin Rapids. Um, uh, thank you so much for joining us today and uh, yeah. appreciate all you have done as Miss Wisconsin Rapids as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Keep Stay tuned here, everyone. We usually talk to all the candidates every year um, uh, as they come up, as we get to the, the pageant coming up here very soon, I think, uh, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. Uh, so uh, once again, uh, get ready for that, everyone. And thank you once again, uh, uh, Allie, for joining us today. Uh, we'll be back. Thank you for your service to our city. <laughs> Don't step on my lines, Melissa. Uh, I'm trying not to. <laughs> we'll be back in just a minute with some entertainment news here on WFHR. I couldn't sleep at all last night. Just the beginning of the year. Baby, things weren't right. Just the beginning of the year. When I was tossing and turning. Welcome back to the morning show on WFHR 97.5 FM on your radio dial. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. Big shout out once again to, let me get my name here. I don't want to say it wrong. Allie Waite, <laughs> Miss Wisconsin Rapids 2024. Uh, she's going to be wrapping up her uh, her time as Miss Wisconsin Rapids very soon. I have to say, you know, we've talked to a lot of these uh, young ladies doing this, and it is really a cool program, uh, all the <laughs> stuff that they do get to do. Yeah, and it, and it, the watching them as they progress along the journey mm -hmm. and hearing them as they grow in confidence and um, just their ability to present themselves and, and talk about the things that they're passionate about is cool. so much fun to experience. It really and is. And as much as I don't do my nails, I kind of want her to paint something <laughs> on my nails. Not only I, the fact that she does character work on nails. Mm -hmm. Very fine work, which is remarkable to me. And then she, the speed painting thing, that still yeah, blows so my cool. mind. Oh, my gosh. But I do love her initiative. And, yes. And the science of it is really cool. That's really interesting. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So. And, and we just need more kindness. We more. do. We do. We always use more kindness. I love the way that all these pageants have gone uh, in this, this, different, this different direction than they used to be considered. I know there was always right. a part of it like this, but... Uh, uh, this these the days, I think, yeah, the focus is, is a lot different. On, yes, on this and uplifting women, and um, you know, giving them a chance to to earn scholarship money to continue their education. It mm -hmm. I, it has changed my view on it as well. That's really cool. And they do nails. At least she does. <laughs> All right, let's get into some entertainment news here, everyone. I don't know if you've heard this fun, fun, I guess is a relative term, uh, story <laughs> of uh, the band Jane's Addiction. Uh, they ended their show early Friday in Boston after uh, Perry Farrell assaulted Dame Navarro on stage. Yeah, it was a... <laughs> Kind of a weird video to watch. Uh, yeah, if you haven't seen it, uh, Perry got in Dave's face and shoulder checked him before throwing mm -hmm. a punch. Uh, a crew member tried to get Perry to stop. Then bassist Eric Avery put him in a headlock and punched him in the stomach. Yeah. The, the crew was really quick to get on stage, too. Like, they were prepared for this. It's like, it sounds like they were ready for something to happen. Yeah. Um, uh, there had been some, uh, I guess earlier in the tour, there had been some rumblings. There's been issues with uh, Perry Farrell. 
um, uh, on a, a number of fronts. So I guess that is not uh, not too surprising. The band issued a statement on Saturday uh, saying, quote, we want to extend a heartfelt apology to our fans uh, for the events that unfolded last night. They also canceled uh, the show in Connecticut, uh, but there's no word yet on the remainder of their tool. Uh, tour, excuse me. Tour. Uh, tour. Uh, Perry's wife shared her perspective on what went down. She called her husband a crazed beast. <laughs> Ooh, okay. And she sa- would know. And said he had been frustrated with the sound because his voice was being drowned out by the band. That is not how you resolve that issue. No. 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 No, that's... No, plus when you're on stage, I mean, I'm I'm no professional no <laughs> on, on that type of stage but you really can't tell from the stage what it sounds like in the audience uh no no you cannot uh because of how loud it is and if you have mm-hmm. like monitors in your ears uh, or something like that i mean mm-hmm. you're very isolated from the other sound going on but right <sighs> how old are these people now jane's addiction has been around for like this is their 25th anniversary this year Wow. It's why are they act? Ugh, it drives me crazy. Act like adults. Come on, you're not like teenage band members anymore. No, and, and, I mean not that it's cool for them to do looking, it either. But well, no, but and people are looking up to them and they're witnessing this and and having to experience it. That would have been an uncomfortable moment for the entire audience. Oh yeah, and they're and they're here. They paid good money to see their yep. favorite band or you know or a band they like. I don't know if it's their favorite band that mm-hmm. hasn't been around. You know they haven't been together a lot. They've you know broke up many years ago and they've you know occasionally gotten back together. And now they have to deal with this. How disappointing for the yeah. fans. Uh, those are the ones that get to that pay the worst on this. On this kind of stuff. So. Right. They were formed in Los Angeles in 1985. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for just for a little history there. Yes. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, if you listen to uh, our the show after this one every morning at 10 o'clock, uh, Jane's, uh, Jane Matinair on air, uh, her theme song is Jane Says, which is a song oh. by Jane's Addiction. So. <laughs> Yeah. So you actually hear it every every morning mm-hmm. on here. I did see something that uh, Perry Farrell also apologized to, uh, to the uh, his bandmates and stuff, but we can get into that some oh, other time. Right. Just uh, silliness. He's sixty five years. He's sixty five. At, at least he knows how to apologize for something and, and take ownership for something he did wrong. Yes, that's good. Uh, that's good. Although it makes you wonder if if there's uh, some um, influence. From substances that caused him to do that as well. That's always because uh, I know he's he's dealt with that in the past. So anyway, let's turn to something more fun uh, than than bands <laughs> fighting we? each other. We're going to 2024's Ig Nobel Awards. Include mm. studies on coin flips and breathing through your butt. What? That's that's right. That's what, what? it's all about. <laughs> That. Uh, that's what that's what the study was. I'm just I'm read the thing here. Say so, so this year's Ig Nobel Nobel. It's no. I don't know if it's Nobel or Nobel. By the way, they are not associated with the Nobel Prize <laughs> at all. <laughs> no, this not even Ig remotely. Nobel. It's a, it's a pun. Ig Nobel. Okay. Uh, prize winners were announced the other day. It's like the Nobel Prize for the weirdest and dumbest insights science offered us 2024. I I actually don't think dumbest is is fair on this one because there's actually mm-hmm. more to it than just that. But mm-hmm. these are some very fun things to talk about. You can breathe through your butt. Re- <laughs> researchers found. M- <laughs> you didn't know that, that's Melissa. Called, that's called flatulation. <laughs> that's not breathing. That's that's just well, that's, it's, it's exhaling um, <laughs> from the that other part side. Of breathing. <laughs> but you can't exhaling. take oxygen in. I really hope you can't do that if your butt. <laughs> Actually, some side, I'm sure some sideshow people can do that. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, researchers have found that many mammals are capable of it. The study showed doctors might be able to treat things like COVID using a special mixture of oxygenated liquid. See, now this is where this stuff comes in. Interesting. So because, now we're talking about enemas? Yeah, well, I, it's a special mixture of oxygenated liquid, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like putting That's liquid what it up says. your butt. That's an enema, <laughs> hey, Seth. Hey, if it's another way to treat COVID, hey, there's a lot of, you know, suppositories mm, of medicine yep. that you can use there that are, go that there way. Are, yep. and they're very mm-hmm. useful. Yes, they mm-hmm. are. Yes. So, again, there might be useful uh, stuff to this topic stuff. topic to talk about during a morning show, <laughs> so, but that's yeah, what we do. Hey, we do that's what we, what we expect. Come on. <laughs> All right. I, oh, I wish I had cold medicine. <laughs> this is not as much fun without it. <laughs> oh, 
my gosh. As you can tell, Melissa uh, is, mm. is a little under the weather. but uh, Yes, I am suffering from a cold, which is why I'm here <laughs> in, in my home, isolated yes. from all human uh, yes. beings. Yes, so we, we, we do not join her in that. That's something we don't want to share with Melissa. No. Uh, a team in Amsterdam... Among other things. <laughs> a team in Amsterdam did 350,000 coin flips and found it's not really 50-50. Mm. Coins are slightly more likely to land on the same side they started on. Oh. Slightly more likely. Slightly. But uh, I would say this might be a way to win a bar bet. Okay. So that's there's there's a useful application for this. Mm-hmm. Um, it also it, it also uh, if you, you Melissa, do you know the beginning of the play uh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead? No. When uh, they it starts out with the two characters walking and flipping a coin and every single time it comes up heads. Okay. Uh, for like eighty some times in a row, or something like that, um, wow. to show how about randomness. It's th- there's a reason that it's in there uh, mm-hmm. about because it's it's about you know theater characters and stuff like that. Well, uh, <laughs> it it, finds, it depends on I guess which one you started. So maybe every time they started it was heads. I don't know. Maybe really? N- now that we this, now that we know does that. This then. Um... Are are football teams when they do the, the coin toss at the beginning of the game? Ooh. Are they allowed to see the coin before it's tossed? Usually, I think for like big games, like the championship games and the Super Bowl, they show the coin because it's usually like a commemorative coin that has something you know interesting on the front and the back, the designate, designated head and tail. So I don't know. That's a that's a good question. We but should we should find that- out if they would do that. Would that be the same? And what kind of coin did they use for this toss? Was it a quarter? Well, see now. Was it a pound? Was well, it, it was a... in Amsterdam. Uh, okay, maybe they so used some Amsterdam? of their local money for that. I don't or know. That's a, a great euro? question. Yeah, like what did they use for this? Because that that would probably make a difference too. That's right. That's right. This year's Peace Prize, they have a uh, Peace Prize every year. Uh, by the way, this is not the, the Peace Prize was not this year. It was back in 1960. Oof. Because it went to a study that looked at whether you could put pigeons inside missiles to help guide them. Oh, my goodness. Now, here's an interesting thing. I read a little bit more about this study. It was done by the psychologist, behaviorist, uh, B.F. Skinner. And I don't know if that's a name you're familiar with, uh, Melissa. Yeah. Um, he was famous for saying but his main thing about psychology was you can teach anybody to do anything. Hmm. with the right incentives and and the right correction, as he called it. In fact, he came up <laughs> with something called the Skinner Box, uh, where you would put some uh, animal or th- something, and that's how you teach them how to do it. Sounds like cruelty to me. He also yeah. he also said that you could do this with children. Um, <laughs> here's the funny thing. B.F. Skinner's been dead for uh, many years now, um, mm-hmm. but apparently his daughter accepted the prize for him. Okay. And I'm wondering, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> no one said whether or not she got out of her box to do it. Um, <laughs> that was mean. Um, all right. Uh, the this bo- is how not to train somebody <laughs> to do right. something or to animal or child. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, the Botany Prize went to a study that found some plants will imitate the shapes of fake plastic plants if you put them next to each other. Really? So okay. uh, that would be interesting. To, to plant sculpting. Hmm. That would be a fascinating thing to study on your own, I would think. It would. But Find out if it would work. Dedicate quite a bit of time to that. Because yes, you I don't probably know would. If you've noticed, but plants grow slowly. They, <laughs> they, they do, unlike you know <laughs> mosquitoes or you know, <laughs> right? Uh, or flies. Yes, they, they do quite uh, quite yeah. slowly. Uh, the anatomy prize went to a study that looked at the direction your hair swirls in and whether it's affected mm. by the hemisphere you're born in. Kind of like the myth that toilets flush in opposite directions. Hey, that's fascinating. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I thought that one was really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. Although it doesn't my say that swirls <laughs> It doesn't say what they found. Wants. Oh, does it? It doesn't it doesn't go the same way every time. So I think I think that has more to do with your hair care routine than which hemisphere you live in. <laughs> I think that is absolutely correct. I had a barber tell me once that you can basically train your hair to do any uh, to do anything. Yep. You just have to put it in a box. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> just, you just have to be consistent. You do. You do. And you can you can do that. Kind and of I mean, like with parenting, it do- <laughs> which does not include boxes. <laughs> no. 
it, it depends on, you know, of course it has to do with how much body your hair has and all these other things, you know, uh, mm. to, to how easy it is to train to do certain things. Yeah, but, but if you do the same hairstyle every single day, your hair is naturally going to want to go that way. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's my hair is, is proof of that. Um, <laughs> Uh, the prize for medicine went to a study that found placebos work better if they cause a few painful side effects. Oh, boy. Which what? that actually totally makes sense to me. Consider, really? you know, okay, you're in the, the culture that we live in, the med- a lot of the medications we have, you know, you watch an ad for medication. And the and list of spend, side effects? They spend 20 seconds 20 with the seconds. ad listing I, off the side effects. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> but I, there's got to be something that people re- feel that, you know, well, if this medicine's going to work, i got to have some side effects to it, right? You, gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta struggle. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta have like pain feel, to, to you get the have cure. Some headaches, mm-hmm. or your joints hurt, or you have to pee every thirty minutes. <laughs> right. Speaking of that, you know, uh, we, <laughs> a friend okay. of mine and I in high school had to create a commercial um, for a, med- a pill. I don't remember what the assignment was. It was speech class. But we we did a little blue pee pill commercial. And the only thing that the little blue pee pill did that was good was it turned your pee blue. But we had a ridiculous list of absolutely awful and horrendous side effects that it caused. And that was our commercial. I so wish someone had recorded that. Where was YouTube back then, man? Right? That, I would this love to see that. Somewhere. It should. I totally want to see that now. Maybe we'll have to remake it. So... But again, I, I totally believe it. If the placebo causes harm, I, I think people would think it would work better. And it's a placebo, so it doesn't matter. Right, it's all in your head. It's not doing the thing you exactly. want it to do. Exactly. Right. Uh, the physics prize went to a study that looked at the swimming abilities of dead trout. Dead trout. <laughs> dead. Okay. okay. This is what I'm struggling I mean, with. I'm trying to what? figure out some <laughs> application so, for this one. <laughs> Uh, fish, the fish, the design of a fish is mm-hmm. is uh, is perfect for swimming through water. Like right. that's their environment. That's mm-hmm. what they do. So I would think that even without animation, the body would itself would still, in some ways, <laughs> go through water better yeah. than say a log. But <laughs> I don't know what they were comparing it oh, to. Oh, that's that's I, interesting. I don't know. Let's get. <laughs> Got a couple more here. Just gonna get through the last couple here. The chemistry prize went to a study uh, used to pro- used a process called uh, chromatography to make drunk and sober worms race each other. Drunk and sober worms. Okay, question, question. How did they get the worms drunk? Well, uh, they, they want to know. They uh, took him to a nice restaurant first, and then they uh, no. bought him a very expensive. This is a bad drink. Yeah, very cheap drunk. Um, number nine, the biology prize went to an old study from 1941 where researchers popped. I love this one. Brown paper bags while a cat stood on a cow's back. What? They were apparently trying to see if they could scare cows into producing more milk. What does that have to do with a cat standing on their back? So they pop the bags to make the cat jump, jump like, like bear's and claws, stick its claws yeah. into the cow to see if that would make more milk. What? That's what makes the most sense to me. <laughs> that makes zero sense. Again, I don't know if it was successful or not, but okay, this was during a war, the, you know the World War II, forty one. Maybe they're trying to find ways to make you know milk production. More they production. needed more, you know, to feed the right. troops and all these right. things. Because I mean, there was definitely shortages. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, interesting, you know, uh, way of doing it. But I think they're, it's they were trying to do something useful. one of many useful. ways yeah. they tried. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, so, there's There are studies during the uh, World War II that are just crazy uh, from yeah. all sides. It's pretty pretty yeah. remarkable. And finally... And the reason that we have some of the safety measures we have. That is correct. That is correct. Uh, and finally, the prize for demographics went to a study that found places where people supposedly live the longest tend to have poor record keeping when it comes to when people are born. <laughs> <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. Uh, I don't was... know when you were born, but you look 105. So let's and, just say you are. Yeah, let's. I, I'm. 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 I'm good with that. I, I feel so much better now that we know that. Uh, it makes me feel a lot better. You know what else makes me feel a lot better? This coming season for WRC Theater, WRCT, uh, they mm-hmm. got a lot of fun stuff coming up, and uh, it's starting in just boy goodness, less than two weeks. Uh, Melissa, oh my we wow. have. The production of Drinking Habits, a comedy directed by Mr. John Young. Mm -hmm. Uh, The dates are September 26th and 27th at 7 p.m., September 28th at 2 o'clock, October 3rd, 4th at 7, and October 5th 
at two o'clock as well. Uh, so uh, it's a, the, the setup is just a little bit different this uh, uh, this year, everyone. Uh, you might notice that the schedule uh, for each weekend is different. They're trying something new this year. So keep that in mind. It's not the same as it was last year. Okay. Um, so, so pay attention yes, to dates. Keep, keep those in mind uh, when you uh, get your dates there. So that uh, that's going to wrap up on October 4th. Right after that, they do have auditions for the winter uh, Christmas show, everyone. Uh, yeah. White Christmas, the musical. White Christmas. Auditions are October 7th and 8th for that mm-hmm. one. Uh, go this online. Is the first time they've done a, mu- a musical on the main stage in a long time. In a long time, for, very for exciting. A main stage production. The, yes. the, the kids' productions have mm-hmm. been doing musicals, and they're phenomenal. Yes, they are all amazing, and mm-hmm. hopefully this one will be just as amazing. Uh, it's a classic White Christmas. It's one of my favorite Christmas movies of all time. Mm-hmm. And I know the uh, the Broadway show is a little different, of course, uh, but it still looks like a lot of fun. You can uh, fill out your audition form online now, everyone. Go to wrctheater.org. Get it done beforehand. Uh, mm-hmm. You don't have to do it when you get there also coming up uh we've got uh some uh spooky karaoke on october 8th <laughs> at the fun. at the lowest canton studio theater from six to nine this is for all <laughs> ages and there's going to be a costume contest hey, hey. get your so best costume kids, out everybody can dress up exactly kids and bring your your spooky theater music yes yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah or, or your uh you know monster mash uh that's what uh, uh i'll convince james to do that with me we'll do with monster okay. mash together so as the long monster as i only mash. have to hear it once yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yes, that that would be the only thing to do. Uh, then at uh, the Silver Foxes are going to be having a show as well at the end of October. Mm-hmm. Let the Spirit Move You. Uh, the production dates for that are the 24th, 25th, and the 26th. Uh, that all looks really cute. Yeah, $10 for that. You can get your tickets at the door, of course, online at wrctheater.com. Uh, we don't, and, and there is one more thing I want to talk about. Uh, we do have coming up as well that uh, I am going to be a part of. Uh, a director's showcase show coming up in November, everyone. Ooh, nice. So uh, we're a couple months out on that one, but I'll get into more uh, details on that as we get closer to that. But we have confirmed the dates on that in the middle of November. So hey, it's going to awesome. be uh, it's going to be fun. Well, like I said, we'll get into that as uh, as we go along here. All right, <laughs> let's get to some state, local, and uh, sports news here on uh, in uh, throughout Civic Media. And uh, when we come back, let's see, we are going to talk about a very expensive martini. Get ready, <laughs> that Melissa. Worms can get drunk on. The, <laughs> the, the worm martini. You don't drink the worm, you feed the worm. That's coming up here on WFHR. What is it, tequila now? <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to The Morning Show on WFHR, locally grown radio. Thanks for tuning in today, everyone. Appreciate all you listeners out there. Another band from the 90s that's not, uh, as far as I know, not fighting each other. So that's that's good. <laughs> Bonus. Keep, keep it together for the Red Hot Chili Peppers there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, coming up, we're going to talk about uh, a few more things to uh, wrap up the morning here, everyone. We're going to talk about does checking your bag at the airport early help make it one of the first to hit the baggage claim? We will do, we'll figure that out, find out if that is actually a real thing. And if we can get to it, the world's most stressful tourist trap. Ooh. Most stressful tourist trap. So, <laughs> how to travel and where not to go. Yeah, where not to go. Actually, it's a place <laughs> I've been, and I actually like it a lot. So, oh. I don't remember being that stressful. Uh, but okay. I might have a story well, for that, not, too. You're a real <laughs> stressful guy, though. Uh, it depends. It really does. All right, we're going to go to Chicago next. And uh, you're going to be shaken and stirred if you order this by mistake. Ooh. A, okay. fan- a fancy restaurant in the Windy City called Adelina is serving the most expensive martini in America for the very reasonable price of $13,000. <gasps> what? <laughs> what? How can a drink cost $13,000? Well, uh, that's a great question, Melissa. Uh, for that much, you'd expect to get diamonds with it, and the good news is you do. <laughs> oh, okay. It's only that you much. you get to keep them? Well, that's the thing. It's only that that much because it comes with a 14 karat gold tennis bracelet with 150 would... diamonds in it. Whoa. Whoa. What that has to do with a drink? It's a tennis yeah. bracelet, though. I'm very, I mean, I'm very confused. That's, well, the restaurant is above a jewelry store, and they partnered with them uh, on ah. this one. So, but, yeah. so basically, it's a tennis bracelet that comes with a drink. With a drink, yes. Not the other way around. Uh, but it, it maybe, maybe. 
you know, you, you, you'd be okay with, you know, it's like, okay, you know, I, I was going to buy a tennis, $13,000 tennis bracelet anyway. So, right. you know, I might as well That's get a drink with it. <laughs> you may not say that when you find out it's a mezcal martini. <laughs> Mezcal. So unless you like the taste of tequila and campfire, you might as well save your money. <laughs> mezcal is tequila, and it's not good. It's I'm, some people like it, but it's you know. What isn't that? That's not what belongs in a martini, though. No, it's the other thing. It's, it's <laughs> you can have uh, a vodka martini if you order just mm-hmm. a martini. You're supposed to get gin in it. That's right. you know what a basic martini is. Gin I'm not vermouth. Yeah, exactly. Um, you, you can make other drinks, you know, like Cosmopolitan. Those usually have vodka in it, though. Um, but those aren't martinis. Those are different drinks. Different drinks. I'd, yeah. Uh, mezcal is, ugh. Uh, you know, I haven't, I, didn't, I haven't had a drink in like this 18 years. And mm-hmm. I can't, I, and I remember tasting that. Oh, it's awful. It's terrible. <laughs> even all these years later, oh, I can't even imagine drinking that stuff. Wow. For $13,000. For $13,000. Let's make it as bad as we possibly can. Buyer's remorse. <laughs> I hope it's just buy the bracelet, you know. Just, <laughs> just go to the jewelry for. store and buy the bracelet if you wanted the drink to. Isn't you know, worth it. You know, no, it's not. All right, so we're, let's get to this one. Let's get to uh, seeing if checking your bag early is actually going to help you yes, get it early. Yes, because I need to know this. You need to know. Melissa needs to know this one. Not it, that I'm going anywhere, but I need to know this. Just in case. If you're one of those people who gets to the airport four hours early, so your checked bag is the first one off the plane. I've never done that. I, I think I've been at an airport four hours early. But, but not on purpose. Not for the bags. No. <laughs> the thing that stresses me out is going through security. As soon as I'm yeah. done with that, then I'm fine. But well, that's yeah, the thing that stresses me out. Because nothing to worry about. Right. Exactly. But anyway, uh, when you uh, if you get your bag first when you land, it might be time to rethink your strategy. Uh-oh. <laughs> a baggage handler recently went on Reddit and offered an answer to questions about the whole process. Someone asked... Okay. If there's any truth to the idea of how early you check in at the airport determines uh, when you check your checked bag will come down the conveyor belt at your destination. Hmm. Some people think if your bag is one of the first ones on the plane, it'll be the first ones off when you land. Some, of course, also think the reverse, that it'll be the last one off if you have it in first because, you know, it'll end up in there first. Right. But here we go. Okay. The baggage handler said there's some truth to it. But the carts of luggage don't always get loaded in order, so there's no guarantee. And if you have a yeah. connecting flight, that changes. Yeah, forget it then. That changes <laughs> that everything. That changes everything. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so that's so basically, no. Uh, because <laughs> of, and, you know, yeah, there's direct flights and things. And maybe then if it's just one direct flight. But if you have, like, a connection or two, forget it. It's just going to get moved mm-hmm. and stuff and maybe not even get moved and end up in Toledo, you know, or whatever. Right. Some other European country. So if if you're a person who needs to get to the airport to put your bag in, don't worry about it. Relax. No. Take it easy, everyone. The best way to get your checked bag first is to only bring a carry-on, <laughs> get on the plane last. There you go. And they've run out of overhead bins to put your carry-on, <laughs> and they make you check it. Yep. And then it comes off first. Because you pick At it up on the my experience. Yep, exactly. You pick it up on the on, on the tar- on the, tar- the, like, the, 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 the tarmac, air bridge. But the, yeah. yeah, whatever that thing is that yeah, you walk yeah. through. Exactly. Back it, in the day, it was the tarmac, but but right. we don't do we that don't anymore. Get access to the tarmac anymore. No, we don't. We can't be cool like no, Cary Grant not or anything. The, no, anything. Uh, this baggage <laughs> uh, handler also shared some tips on the best and worst types of luggage. So this could be useful. Mm, okay. He said that the worst bags with uh, uh, he said the worst are bags with no wheels or mm-hmm. bags with four wheels where one is broken. Since it won't roll correctly, the best are the bags with a hard outer shell and soft lining inside. That makes sense, Mm, uh, considering the the wear and tear that uh, these bags go through when they're being thrown around. And yeah, they do get thrown around. And and I'm not going to be too upset about baggage handlers about that. They are on a limited time frame. Yeah, they They got to get this stuff done. They got to do it quick. Yeah, it's got to be packed. I mean, if you've ever have you ever watched a video of them packing luggage into the the belly of a plane? It's like Tetris on a massive scale. <laughs> that's that's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Wow, because they only have so much space to work with. So right. yeah, wow. And they only have so much time. Mm-hmm. So that's it's a it skill. Is cool to see. Yeah, mm-hmm. that is pretty cool. So. But yeah, the hard bags would probably be the best way to yep. go now. Makes the most sense to me, unless mm-hmm. you have you know it's just like clothes where you, you know if it's soft stuff where you don't care yep. if anything is squished. But still having <laughs> yeah. a you know a. a a shaped bag versus mm-hmm. like a duffel bag. Duffel, right, right. That's probably the best one. If you have a duffel bag, it's going to get tossed. 
Um, and another baggage handler was in the news earlier this week warning people not to uh, tie colorful ribbons to their bags to help identify them. He said those ribbons can interfere with the scanning process and that can delay your bag and in some cases make it miss the flight entirely. Whoa. Uh, According to him, having a suitcase without identifiers like ribbons and old travel stickers give it the best chance of arriving without any issues. Why? That's weird. I don't know if I believe that. <laughs> why would why would they have having why a would ribbon stickers? Or yeah, a ribbon. Yeah, cause it to be. That seems odd. The uh, one of the I think the reason people do that is because so much luggage now looks all the same. It does all identical. And I, if, if you've ever stood at a baggage claim where, you know, all of the bags are coming around on the carousel, you really have to watch for your bag. You do. You do. And make sure nobody else takes it, which terrified me last time I had to do that. I'm like, nobody take my bag. Don't please. Don't, don't. please. Don't please. Don't take my bag. Where do I got to stand so I make sure I get it <laughs> when it comes off the thing? Um, I would say that um, uh, what, what, what we do, actually, Beth, this is Beth's idea. This is totally her. She actually has a strap, a rainbow strap that she wraps around the bag mm. and clips it, you know, so it's tight on the, oh, on so the bag. Oh, so it come open? Yeah, exactly, because it's got a clip on it. So it looks, mm-hmm. so, and it stand, of course, it stands out because it's around the body of the bag itself. Yeah. So that actually works pretty well, and I'm guessing it doesn't interfere with the scanning process, whatever. You know, ribbons like known to get in the way of that, you know. Weird. I keep okay. barcodes on all my my ribbons. Just make sure no one steals them. So I know that they're my to ribbons. Mess up scanners. Yeah, that's right. I just do it. carry a scanner around with you. <laughs> uh, one more quick story uh, to get to before we get to our final break here. Uh, I do want to talk about this one because uh, I, I have a story that goes along with it uh, from the last time I was in Times Square. That is the world's Whoa. most stressful tourist trap, at least according to this. Oh, okay. So if you have a stressful job, don't go to Times Square. <laughs> this is not where you should vacation. Uh, so this study, this report on the world's most stressful tourist traps, it looked at over 80 popular tourist de- destinations and analyzed visitor reviews, looking wow. for negative words like overrated, tourist trap, and underwhelming. <laughs> in the end, number one most stressful tourist trap was Times Square in New York. Hmm. Which I like their note, which is definitely not a chill place to be. It's not that bad. I don't. Anyway, the Hollywood Walk of Fame in California was number eight. Hmm. Those are the only two American places on the list, even though oh. they top the list with that. Okay. The, the rest of the top 20 include uh, uh, Checkpoint Charlie in Berlin. I have no idea what that is. Hmm. Uh, the Eiffel Tower in Paris makes sense. The Little Mermaid yep. sculpture in Denmark makes sense. The Blue Lagoon in Iceland. Okay. okay. The London Eye. Yeah, makes sense. The, the, Guinness, Stair, the Guinness Storehouse in Ireland. Uh, the Louvre Museum in Paris. And the Coliseum in Rome. Of course, those all make uh, sense. I knew that one was going to make the yeah. list. On the flip side, Lake Kalmasi. I might be saying that wrong. In Switzerland. Oh, I might lose my Swiss, Swiss card on that one. Is the world's most relaxing tourist hotspot, followed by Uluru or Ayers Rock in Australia. I'm guessing very isolated areas. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, everything's yep. calmer by the lake. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So the last time I was in New York City, uh, mm-hmm. just for a vacation, I think 2019 was the last time I was there. Um, you know, we Beth and I spent the whole day walking around all throughout New York. You know, that's what you do when you're in New York. You walk around the city because there's lots mm-hmm. of stuff to see and do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and one of the evenings we were there, we were in Times Square. Mm-hmm. And it was busier than usual, which is saying something, um, because there was going to be a high wire act going between the buildings that night Ooh. Oh, that wow. they were televising on NBC or one of the networks. <laughs> so <laughs> it might have been a little more stressful that point because <laughs> <laughs> you've got tightrope walkers on. going between buildings, Yeah, <laughs> which yeah. was pretty, I mean, stress <clears throat> inducing. Yeah, right. To the people watching, I mean, it's like, whoa, whoa, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, other than that, I, you know, I've been to Times Square, you know, a, a number of times, a handful of times in my life. And I've never felt that it's that stressful. There's a lot of people there, mm-hmm. but it's not like constantly crowded. So well, I don't know. Well, and some of those other factors, though, that got it, the, the, the award, mm-hmm. so to speak, of, you know, overrated or tourist trap or things like that. Some people might feel that way about it. True. Um, I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. I would still visit it if I was in New York. <laughs> you don't want to miss it. It's really cool. It's an iconic place yeah. that you need to, to see it because we see it so often in movies and, mm-hmm. you know, on television, uh, parades, uh, New Year's Eve. It, it would just be a cool place to see. Yes. I've actually been there uh, for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade one oh, year. Cool. I got I to see it there, I'd too. I don't think I'd want to spend a day there, but... 
Oh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, you An would spend the whole day, not not the whole day at Times right. Square, but right. in the city, you absolutely, oh, for sure. yeah. No, I think you need more than a day to experience New York City. You do. It's just too big. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah. way too big. Otherwise, and, and too many shows to see. My goodness. Uh, yeah, if you can get into them, that's the or afford them. That's the other thing too. <laughs> yes. They are very expensive. Although I have a friend who just took a vacation, their quick vacation there, and um, they went to I don't know what it's called, but when you can get the tickets. The, the rush tickets. Yes. The like whatever's left. If over, you don't, if you don't care where you're sitting, yeah, right. absolutely. If yep. you don't care where you're sitting or what you see, there's a lot to see. Yes. Yeah. Hundred percent. I did get to see a uh, a Broadway show. I saw the show Forty Second Street on a theater on Forty Second Street, which was kind of oh, cool. Cool. It's really uh, really kind of neat. All right, we'll be back in just a minute to wrap up the show. Everyone, stick around here for the rest of the morning show on WFHR. It's- Welcome back to the morning show on WFHR, locally grown radio, 97.5 FM on your radio dial and everywhere you go on the Civic Media app. Mm -hmm. Keep those handy, everyone, because we do have our contest going on, our statewide Go for the Green or Gold Text to Win contest. Uh, You're going to need the app in order to qualify for our many, many prizes. Text in those keywords to be that's entered right. in the drawing. Uh, we're not going to do. Hour. That's right. We're not going to do any that ain't right stories or anything like that. Uh, I'm going to just uh, say thank you everyone for your patience today as I uh, <laughs> <laughs> did new territory doing the hosting the morning show. Big thank you to you, Melissa, for helping <laughs> me out on this. Oh, you did great, Seth. Well, I appreciate well that. Uh, mm-hmm. I will uh, as we wrap up the show here. I'm going to go and pass out after we're done. But no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, it was uh, a lot Brittany of fun. Did, Brittany did say she totally understands. <laughs> That we missed her this morning. Oh, she was listening in, okay, and she good. said, you're doing a great job. Oh, I feel bad. I feel so no, bad. No, you don't but, need uh, to feel bad. She'll be back tomorrow. She said, no worries at all. That's good. Well, thank you. Thank you for that, Brittany. I do appreciate that. <laughs> uh, I do want to let everyone know that we are going to be having a couple of best of shows today on Midday Magazine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the first part, we're going to be ta- there, we're going to have uh, Encourage In, the show we did on September 11th uh, nice. with Encourage. Uh, and and then in part two, we're going to have the one we did on Friday with the Wisconsin State Fire and EMS Memorial, which was a really cool interview James did awesome. uh, with them because the uh, the final uh, honor roll is coming up here very shortly in Wisconsin Rapids. Uh, so make sure uh, you uh, get ready for that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, we got to uh, let James rest and, and, and heal up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, so that's that's what's coming up today. We will be having a, uh, a rebroadcast of Unlabeled today as well at 5 o'clock. So make sure you mm-hmm. stay tuned in for that. And don't forget to stay tuned to any civic media station all day long as we continue with the text to win green, uh, go for the green or gold uh, uh, statewide contest coming up here. Our our next word will be coming up at 11 a.m., and that is going Ooh. to be during matinee on air. So make sure you stay tuned You're for that. You're already tuning into Jane's show anyway. Exactly. So be, have the app up and be ready to text. If I remember correctly, too, it sounds like Jane and Todd are doing their con- uh, their competition again. Oh, who yeah, gets the most texts on those one? Yeah, that's <laughs> nice. right. Nice. Uh, but if you do text in, make sure you do it through WFHR so we can get some credit yeah. too, everyone. There we we want we want to get to our numbers up there as well. Our listeners notif- you know, uh, acknowledged. That's right. We do. Yes. Or you can do it, of course, WIRI. We'll be having mm-hmm. words there as well. So make sure you tune in. Either station, doesn't matter. Uh, at right. 11 o'clock, then again at 1 and 4. Uh, four chances every day to win to this rest of this week and next week as well. I hope one of our listeners wins that grand prize. Not I, just because <laughs> I've said I'd go with you. You'd go with them. You know, <laughs> that's not necessary. I, I will happily not watch any football again this year. <laughs> But I do hope one of our listeners wins. The only person in the state of Wisconsin that has ever said that, <laughs> ever. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so I yeah, am not alone. <laughs> no, you're not alone. Uh, there, and just a reminder, everyone, there is a winner every single hour as well, either cash or gold jewelry. Yes. So, man, lots During of fun the hours prizes. that they say the words. Exactly. And yep. you have to make sure you text it within that hour to qualify. <laughs> Keep that in mind as Indeed. well. Uh, and once again, the grand prize is the indoor club level tickets to see the green and gold and in Green Bay on Monday, December 23rd, mm-hmm. taking on the New Orleans uh, green or uh, black and gold. Black and, and gold. unlike the Packers, their color is actually gold. <laughs> Sorry. That's yeah, I know. <laughs> it's pedantic. I, I took it. I took it from James. Actually, uh, that's that's one of his <laughs> things. But uh, being being from Minnesota, I got to point out a certain certain things to you here. You yeah. Know, what is what does your trophy case look like over there in Minnesota? <laughs> Empty. Why does that always come? See, you're not even a football fan, and you're saying stuff like that. That is just 
Not I stole that fair. from the general chat. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. 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 Thanks, well, it's, Chris. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thanks. Thank. Yeah, Chris <laughs> from Minnesota. He is from Minnesota. What is he doing, he the traitor? Uh, no, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, but once again, yes, thank you. <laughs> thanks, everyone, for tuning in today on the morning show. Um, uh, we do appreciate all the listeners out there, especially mm-hmm. when we have to uh, do a little pinch hitting here. Uh, yeah. But we will Congratulations be... to you, Seth, on uh, your debut as host of the morning show. Well, thank you. I, I do appreciate it. Next time, I will do better. I'll just make sure <laughs> make sure you know that. If there is Don't a next time. If there is a next time. <laughs> Uh, stay tuned for Matt and Aaron Air coming up at uh, 10.06. And stay tuned the rest of the day, everyone, to WFHR. Lots coming up here. And have a great day. This is Locally Grown Radio. WFHR 1320 AM. W248DE Wisconsin Rapids. And always streaming on the Civic Media app.